Hey, what's up, everybody? This is your boy, Kenny, and this is If Loving You Was Wrong, Season 4, Episode 8, and the name of this episode is Dark Intentions. Yo, this was actually a pretty interesting episode, and um, next week is the season finale, and yeah, the way it ended, I was just like, you son of a bitch, but I'm going to get to that. But um, before I get started, um, let me offer my love and condolences to everyone that was affected by the tragedies in Texas as well as Las Vegas, as well as everyone that was affected by the Hurricanes, Harvey, Irma, Jose, and Maria. If you can give any type of relief or support to all the individuals that were affected by these tragedies, please do so, because we definitely need to help our fellow man in times of trouble. And we're really going through rough times right now, and we definitely need to be there for each other. All right, so let me begin with this review. All right, now, the episode picked up where it left off. You know, Lucian comes in and gives Natalie proof that the gun um, that, Nat, that, um, that Kelly bought was actually a stolen gun, and it was reported stolen by Ramsey. So, Natalie in, is, like, in, in, like, complete panic mode, um, and pretty much she's like, oh, my God. And she's like, look, and Lucia's just, like, letting her know, like, look, this is a police report. You need to um, call this girl and find out what's going on. And she's like, well, I'll call her tomorrow. She's like, oh, no, you're calling her right now. She calls the number. The phone is disconnected. Mm-hmm. And the thing about it, she did, because she even asked, did she even have a license? The funny thing about it, if you guys remember from last season, she did show Kelly a license to make herself look like she was legit, which is why Kelly bought it from her. But we now know that the license was fake, <laughs> obviously. Um, now, now Lucius is, now Lucian is like, look, this is really bad, and the DA is going to come down hard on her now because now the gun that she bought was actually Ramsey's gun, so it's going to look like she stole the gun from Ramsey which would more and more lead her to make them believe that she's the one that killed them. So he's like, no, we're going to go talk to, we're going to go let Kelly know about this. And Natalie's like, yeah, I'll wait till tomorrow. She's like, no, we're doing this fucking now. <laughs> like, Natalie is trying to dodge this as much as she can, and Lucian is not letting up on her, and I'm glad he's not. So they walk down the tr um, walk down to Kelly's house, and guess what the hell they end up saying? Travis trifling ass over there by the bushes on the side of the house, and you know Lucian pretty much told him to get over here. What the hell are you doing back there? And he's like, I'm stalking by, and he's like, walk towards me right now. What the hell are you doing here? He was like, Well, I was knocking on the door. Because after he saw him, he sent um, Natalie away, so it was just him and Travis there. So he's like, so what are you doing here? He was like, I was knocking on the door. He said, the food, the door is right there. You were on the side of the house. He's like, well, she lets me go in the back door. You know, that's our thing, you know. And he told him that, don't you move. He knocks on the door and asks Kelly, and, he, and, she, and she's like, um... Did you know that he was coming over? She says, no, I didn't even know he was here. So, so, um, he's like, well, I was just checking on her to make sure she was okay. And then, like, Lucian was like, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you get a straining order against her? He was like, yeah, I did. So then it's like, he gets to the point where, you know, Lucian just had enough. He literally jacks up Travis and puts him in a squad car. And Travis is talking big shit like, you don't know what you're doing, man. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what I'm capable of and all of that. So he's like, I'm going to go check, on the, check the back to make sure everything's okay. So while he's sitting in the police car, Kelly's at the front door. She sees that he's over there laughing. And she's like, what is it, what is it that you think is funny about this? And he's like, and he says, you're funny because you're going to jail and that you messed with the wrong guy. She's like, really? How did I do that? She's like, you led me on. You played with my feelings. You played with my emotions. I'm like, you weak-ass Negro. You mean to tell me you are still bent because she gave you 
she gave you some um, black blackberry pie, and then she cut you off. Yeah, just like you did her when you made her think that you guys were building a relationship, but you already had a fiancé. And, and it's like, it, it's something about the men on this show is that they literally, they literally are like walking contradictions. The shit they do, they can't take it when someone does it back to them. And I'm going to get to that because in two other men who are just as crazy have the same damn problem. So they go back and forth and, and then, um... And then she's like, oh, yeah, and what about Ramsey? And he's like, what about Ramsey? She's like, you killed him, and then you have, then you pretty much told all of this crap to my son, Justice. You got my child involved in this? Like, don't you ever talk to him again. And he's like, you Kelly, you ain't seen nothing yet. And she's like, you know what, give me your best shot. He's like, he's like, I did, but you couldn't take it. I was like, oh, so, <laughs> things are getting real crazy. So after that, so then we, so then, like, eventually Lynch just come and takes him to jail. Um, next we see um, a scene with Esperanza and Stevens. Esperanza walks home. She sees Stevens is sitting, is sitting in the car in front of her house waiting for her. She's like, what the heck are you doing here? She's like, I just came here to check on you. She's like, look, I already got a crazy ex. I don't need you doing the same thing. And he's like, I'm not like that. It's nothing like that at all. I just want to see if you're okay, and I wanted to apologize. And then she was like, yeah, you messed up my house. You messed up my house, Stephen. And she's like, and he's like, yeah, but Eddie started it. You know, I mean, yeah, do you remember what the fuck happened? You two was on the counter, rolling around, having afternoon delight, and Eddie Bird barged in. And pretty much started the whole conversation. Esperanza would be full of it. And but he was like, she was like, I can't, like, can I come in? And she's like, I don't think it's a good idea. She's like, come on, let me come in and help you clean up. And we can finish where we started. And she was like, what the hell do you mean finish where we started? Like, what, is this like a job for you or something? And he's like, I didn't mean it like that. But, you know, we can finish connecting because I know we have a connection. And we can kind of tell in the scene they were somewhat going back and forth flirting with each other. And she's like, but the thing is, this is just awkward. You know, we work with each other. You don't know me and I don't know you. And he was like, and he was like, okay, why don't you ask me something? She says, okay, what's my birthday? And he said, June 11th. He's like, okay, what's my favorite color? He says, you don't have one. And she's like, wait a minute. You just work with me. How would you know that? I don't get it. I'm like, Esperanza, you are not that difficult to figure out, bitch. Please. So, um, they pretty much continue to flirt back and forth, and, and, but he's like, you know, can I come in? And she was like, purple. My favorite color is purple. And he's like, what made you choose the color purple? And he, she said, well, those were the color of the underwear that you had on the other day. And he's like, can I come in, please? I'm like, see... It's obvious, boo-boo. You want him, and he wants you. So you need to stop playing these, you know, games and let him get it. I mean, obviously, you let him get as far as he did. You might as well let him go all the way to to home run. I mean, you let him get to second base. Damn, you let him slide in the third. Just saying. So we saw that go on. So... Then we get a scene with Natalie and Kelly. Natalie goes to Kelly and um, she's like, you know, are you okay? And Kelly's like, hell no. What the hell is going on? It's like, I've tried to do everything to get this guy out of my life and I can't take it anymore. Um, so she's asking her, why did you come over? She was like, well, um, um, well, the reason why I came over is because I wanted to tell you that um, Lucius found out information about the gun. But I'll tell you when Lucius gets back. She's like, oh, no, 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 no. See, Natalie is trying to dodge this as much as she can. It is so damn funny. I'm like, bitch, you're the one who set this shit up. And now that this shit is, now, now that your little plan has backfired, you are literally trying to backpedal your ass out of this shit and no one's letting you do it. You try to do it with Lucian 
and you're trying to do this shit with Kelly, and Kelly won't have it. She's like, no, no, no. Um, tell me, what's going on? She lets her know that this gun was stolen, and, she, and she's like, you told me your girl was legit. What the hell is what's that? What the hell is up with that? You mean to tell me she stole me a stolen gun? And she said, "Yeah." And I tried calling her, and the number's disconnected. And she's like, "Oh my God, really?" And she's like, "But this not the bad part." And she's like, "Oh, bad part. The bad part is that the damn gun belonged to Ramsey." Oh, Kelly flipped out. So she's like, "You mean to tell me that you're supposedly around the weird girl that set me up?" And made me buy a stolen gun. Are you serious, Natalie? And she's like, look, Kelly, I'll go by our house, okay? You know, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to fix this. And we just see that Kelly is just blown. She's completely blown. Because it's like, no matter what, she just keeps getting trapped. And it's like more and more, Ramsey, her, and it's like she keeps getting attached to Ramsey's murder in some form. And it's insane. So, next we see that Ian and Marcy are out, you know, celebrating because he's bought the new house. And we actually can see that, yeah, he's definitely flirting with Marcy. And he even lets her know that I like you and I find you very attractive. And Marcy was like, I'm not interested. <laughs> I mean, she. I mean, because if anything, she's probably not. I mean, because I think she still got. She still got a thing for Brad. <clears throat> and he was like, he was saying that, and then she's pretty much saying that, um, you know, it's not. It's and, and like he was like, I, I, I can't believe you're not attracted to me. I'm a. Tra I'm a. I'm an attractive guy. What's up? I'm like, oh yeah, she got your ego. She. You can definitely tell she bruises ego. But then she was like, no, it's not you personally. It's just that I've been going through a lot of crazy thing with my ex, and I'm just over it. Um, so, but he's saying that, look, you better, you better have an appetite today since I'm paying. So, so, um, so she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm just really don't have much of an appetite. You know, it's like, it's like every time I turn around, my ex just won't leave me the hell alone. And, you know, Ian is like, you mean to tell me he has this kind of melt of power over you? And he's like, yeah, the guy's a complete asshole. You really don't know him. And she's like, well, the thing is, what you should do, Marcy, you should sue his ass. Like, yeah, get him to stop. You know, you know, you can, you can, she said there are many different, you know, junctions you can file against him. And, yeah, it may not make him win, but it'll make him stop because she's going to eventually get tired of going to court. But then again, you don't know Rams, you don't know Randall, a.k.a. Psycho Betty. Psycho Betty is the type of bitch that will like to continue to go to court because she gets a thrill out of making people miserable. So, she did let that know, you really don't know him. And she's right. You don't know, you don't know how Randall could go. And you really don't know how close friends him and Larry are, but I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So, we work, I'm, a work, I'm working there. And while they're actually having this conversation, Ian gets a call. And the call is from um, one of his clients. And... There, um, he's kind of outraged because, you know, he's trying to mack the Marcy, but now he's got to go handle business because he's like, well, this is Larry Case. Where the hell is Larry? Well, he's like, look, look, you know, you know what? Just call his parents and we'll, we'll have it all taken care of and all of that. So he hangs up the phone and he pretty much tells, he pretty much, um, tells Marcy, yeah, I got to go handle this case because it's this rich kid who just got arrested and, you know, um, you know, his family is very wealthy and my partner, you know, is one of his biggest clients and they actually, you know, are one of the biggest contributors to our firm. And how come I immediately got the feeling that that client was Travis and Travis family because obviously Travis got long fucking money to do what the hell he's doing to Kelly. Stuff like that don't come cheap. So... It's obvious Travis comes from money, and he definitely comes from a family with a lot of connections. So I immediately just knew it was Travis that he was talking about. But he ends up leaving, and, you know, well, actually, no, he pretty much says that, nah, you know, I'm going to continue that. We're going we're gonna to have our lunch. And then he tried to get her some wine, and she's like, oh, no, water just do. And she's like, oh, wow, you really don't drink. She's like, no, not these days I don't. 
So I was just like, mm. So, and if anything, she's just playing this whole damn thing like she's trying to act like she's not pregnant. So I was just like, wow. So it seemed to me like, yeah, Ian's a player, but Marcy's a player too. So props to Marcy on that one. So then we now down at the station. We see that Lucian, that Lucian has brought in Travis. Um, then before he's about to talk to um, Travis, Lucian has it out with Eddie. And Eddie was like, who the hell you think you are getting away between me and that bitch? And he's like, what the hell are you talking about? And he's like, as a matter of fact, you see this guy right here? You stalking Esperanza? You keep doing that shit, your ass going to end up over here. And he's like, first of all, I was in that chair and you saw what the hell happened, didn't you? And besides, I put my tattoo on that bitch. She belonged to me. And all this shit. And he's like, dude, do you even feel your fucking self? You're fucking crazy and this is insane. Like, what the hell? Just leave her the hell alone. And he's like, mm. And and then um and then he was like and he's and he's like this is crazy he's like yeah you know I'm crazy and you keep on pushing my butt you want to see how far I go he's like you keep on fucking with me Eddie and I'm gonna put some new charges on your ass and your ass gonna end up being back in this bitch and he's like yeah and he was saying that yeah and he said and, and he's saying that yeah but I'm gonna make sure that your boy Stevens is gonna get dealt with too and he's like and he's like look if you think you gonna pull another Andrew with Stevens, you got another damn thing coming. And he's like, come on, man. You know how the job is. You know people disappear. I mean, hey, my uncle has something to do with that. You can't get mad at me. You know, it is what it is. And, and he's like, yeah, I'll make him disappear. And all this other shit. And then next thing you know, we see Stevens comes in. And then, and then Lucian's like, okay, you up in here talking big shit. Stevens is right there. Say what you got to say. And, he, and like he pretty much told him, like, you know, you better watch your ass. He, he's like, you better watch your back, Stevens. And he's like, I'd rather watch Esperanza. <laughs> I was like, okay, Stevens. Ain't scared of any for nothing. So I was, I was feeling that. Because, you know, they always kind of had that tension between them. And he's, and he's like, and he's like, keep on messing with me, and I'm going to make sure I'm going to end you, and I'm going to piss on your grave when I'm done with it. And he was like, yeah, and you better not mess with Esperanza no more. You're going to see what's going to happen to you. And Eddie was like, what do you mean mess with Esperanza? But I've been messing with her ass since she was 17 years old. I've been messing with her. I've, been, I've always messed with her, and I will always mess with her. So if you want to do something, mano a mano, we can handle it. If you want to be, if you want to be about that, won't you jump in, bitch? And I was just like, Eddie is just so fucking crazy. So eventually, Eddie ends up leaving, and so does Stevens. So pretty much, Lucian and Travis have a sit down, and they have like an interrogation going back and forth. Travis is trying to play dumb that he doesn't know what Lucian is talking about. I mean, when he asks questions about why are you harassing Kelly, he's like, I'm not harassing her. She's lying through her teeth and all of this shit. You know, all of this is not true. Um, and then he was like, oh, yeah, but, you know, the, um, and then, and then, like, because pretty much he had sat down and Lucian was like, you know, I have to ask you, a, I, I need to ask you something. And he was like, but I thought detectives are supposed to ask questions, officer. And I'm like, little do you know, Travis, he's an FBI agent, so he's above a detective, bitch. So, so pretty much within interrogation, you know, So pretty much he was saying, so that, so while they was having an interrogation, um, Travis throws out there that, well, once you ask Dion, Dion know the whole story, he know everything. And I'm like, yeah, because Dion probably is on your side and you know damn well you got Dion in your back pocket. And he's like, yeah, I'm familiar with that. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, so you're on her side, huh? Yeah, okay. And then like just the fact that you know, Travis was just so smug and just was just real confident in his shit. Just really, really disturbed Lucian. And Lucian got to the point where he's like, I'm going to nail your ass to the wall. And, he's, and then he's saying that, he's like, oh, really? Why, how are you going to do that? And why, may I ask? I mean, he's just being real smug. And then he was like, look, I know you did something to Ramsey. And he's like, really? He's like, yeah. I know you did something to him. 
I mean, let's just be real. I mean, I mean, like, why wouldn't you? I mean, he lives right next door to Kelly. You know, he's got skills. He's got moves. He's like a built-ass dude. He's, he's real built and muscular. You know, all the women wanted Ramsey. Oh, are you talking about that? You're talking about that, you know, that big-ass dude that lived next door. I was like, ah, yeah. Yeah, Lucian was getting somewhere. He's like, oh, so you do know him, huh? So Lucian knows Travis is full of shit and that Travis knows how to put on a good face. He knows he's a sociopath. I mean, for one, he had a sociopath for a partner, so he knows uh, when he's dealing with one. The same thing. Oh, oh yeah, just thought about it. The same shit that um, Travis is doing. Same shit Eddie doing. Eddie can run around and fuck every, you know, bitch that he wants. But Esperanza, she can't have a life. You know, because she's his, cause he feels he owns her. He feels that because they have a child together and because they have history, that, that she's always his and that no one else can have her. And it's just like the double standard. The same thing with Travis. So it's like they all, all the psychopaths on this show are cut from the same cloth. And there's a third one that I'm about to get into. So they pretty much um, go through all this. And he was saying that, come on, man. Why, why would, like, you probably, you know, like, I wonder how you did it, though. You know, a guy that size. I mean, you probably caught him by surprise. I mean, because after all, look at you. You don't look like you have any skills. You can't fight. And you're bitch, and you're kind of bitchy. And... You know, and all of that. And and then he's saying that. But the funny thing about it, how is it that Justice knew all this information? He was like, maybe because Justice did it. He's like, no. Nah. Justice didn't, did, would not have the skills to kill a guy that size. But you, being on some jealous shit, probably could have did something. And so then after that, um, so pretty much while they're interrogating, we see that Ian comes in there with Stevens. And Stevens is like, look, we got to let him go. He's like, what the hell do you mean we got to let him go? And then Ian pretty much says that, look, you know, he's my client. He's like, are you serious? You're going to do this? Looking at Ian, because he's like, Ian's supposed to be representing Kelly. But then he comes to find, but then he pretty much says that, but no, he's my case. Donovan Kane. I mean, he's my client, Donovan Kane. And he's like, no, this is Travis Kane. He's like, this is the same Travis that Kelly's been talking about? And Lucian is like, yes. And he's like, oh, man. So he's the one that's been harassing Kelly. And he's like, yes. He's like, I can't represent her no more. He's like, really? He's like, look, Larry represents him as well as his church. You know, they bring a lot of money to our firm. You know, his family and his church are very good with us. You know, it's a conflict of interest. I can't represent Kelly no more. So I was just like, whoa. So that just got shut down. And then um, pretty much um, Lucius and Lucian and, um, and Stevens talking. He was like, you know, yeah, this guy's getting away with this crap and he's not going to stop. So won't you look into his brother Donovan Kane? Find out what he's all about. Because obviously his brother was the one that made the call that they need to um, get him out. So then we get we go to um, Brad and Alex's house. They're cuddled up, enjoying you know you know dinner and a movie. I don't even think they ever had dinner, but they obviously were enjoying TV. Next thing you know, you hear a big ass bang on the door, and it's Eddie. Eddie just barges in, just talking big shit like, "I'ma get that bitch. I'ma get that bitch, and I don't give a fuck about that whore right there. I need to talk to you." And blah blah blah. And, Eddie, and like he literally. Brad literally grabbed Eddie and literally pushed his ass out the damn house. Like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? And then, and then he's like, that damn Esperanza is messing around with that bitch Stevens, and I want to take his ass out. And he's like, and he's like, and then like, Brad is like, um, Esperanza's single, Eddie. She can be with whoever she wants. Like, the hell she can't. She's the mother of my child. We have a kid together. She belongs to me. And he's like, but, Eddie, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, dude, why don't you just go to hell home? It's like, I ain't got no home, man. I ain't got no home. 
But he's like, you know what? I need you to do something for me. Won't you go down? I want you to go to this place, you know, and all like these boys or whatever. You know, I just need you to do that for me. And, you know, and, 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 and then Brad's like, I'm not doing shit for you. He's like, but look, if you help me out, I'll help you out, you know, with that asshole next door. And he's saying that, and he's like, you know what, Eddie, you just need to drop this shit. You need to go home. And you just need to leave this shit alone. He's like, dude, I just told your ass I ain't got no damn home. And what the hell happened to you? Since you got back with that bitch, you've been all soft and shit. You can get a bitch like that with $20. I was like, you disrespectful motherfucker, Eddie. That's still his wife. Regardless of the fact we know Alex is a slut, and we know Alex is a lying, and, and, he, and we know Alex lies, and we know that Alex is full of shit. We all know that. I can't stand Alex. I know that at the end of the day, but you can't fault the man for caring because that's still his wife. And he was like, and then Brad was like, you just don't understand love, Eddie. And he's like, you're right. I don't understand love because love doesn't exist. But I understand tits and ass. And when I put my mark on somebody, nobody touches them. So... So fuck you, I'll do it myself, since, and thanks for nothing. I'm like, Eddie is just going to keep on being really badass until somebody fucks him up. And from the way things are going, that might happen. <laughs> so then, um, Alice goes back into the house. So pretty much Brad goes back to the house. Alice is like, I don't even want to know what's going on. So, um... They realized, uh, so pretty much she was like, you know, get rid of those damn things. I'm tired of looking at them, meaning like the, um, the little camcorder and the um, floodlight. And he picked it up, and he notices that the light was still on. So she's like, oh, my God, has that light been on the whole time? And she's like, how is it even possible if this connected by the wall? Well, he said that he, he actually had a backup battery to it, and every time, and like whatever, and he, and he says that he gets text video as well as audio images from the camera so he can pretty much hear and probably go back and view everything that they talked about in that house so it's like oh my god what if he knows and brad was like um if he knows he'll probably been by here don't you think she like the story of brad get rid of it get rid of it i was like mm -hmm. i was and i was just like oh shit so now the shit is like Alice again planning some bullshit and it's just going to grow into something crazy as always so then we get the last scene of the night Larry and Randall they both drunk as all hell they both coming up in there they taking shots and you know they all over the place they all out of control they even talked about a time when they were in college how they, you know, placed a VHS camera in the girls' dorm room and they end up getting kicked out of school for that shit. So these dudes are trash. Like, seriously. They are really fucking trash. I mean, Marcy has no idea the kind of sociopathic asshole she married. She really doesn't know the full extent of how much messy shit him and Larry did around the time that they were dating each other. I mean, Randall has always been doing this crap. You know, screwing other women and all that. So this whole thing with him and Alex, that was something he did all the time. I mean, it was a shock to us, you know, that you got this beautiful wife and yet you're sleeping with your neighbor next door. That shit he did even in college. Unbeknownst to her. So it's crazy as hell. So then they pretty much go for they pretty much go back and forth and everything, and he was pretty much saying that you like you know, um, um, so th so then he's um, so then pretty much you know um, Randall starts going on talking about some yeah I'm gonna really make that bitch next door's life a living hell and he's like why don't you just and then Larry's like why don't you let it go and he's like I'm not gonna let it go she humiliated me yeah but you also humiliated her. And you humiliated Marcy. And he's like, so what? And Larry's like, you don't care about Marcy? And he's like, no, I don't care about her. And he's like, why don't you? He's like, because she has sex in the neighborhood shed and all this shit. And he's like, yeah, and it's the same. And she's like, she was hurt. And she did it off of the reaction of you having sex with your neighbor in that same shed. So let it go. And he's like, 
And he came like, look, just let it go. Let her, let her go. There are, there are a lot of, like, you are a good looking man. There are a lot of other beautiful women who would kill to have a guy like you. And he's like, I don't want other women. I want the two women in my life to suffer. And he's like, how long though, Randall, until I'm satisfied? I'm like, see, when this type of shit is, the, is why people get killed. Because motherfuckers don't know when to leave things alone and to move on. So since he wants to keep on poking at them, yeah, if someone puts a bullet in your head, Randall, I feel I, I don't feel sorry for you whatsoever. Because Psycho Betty has completely lost his mind. And, and then he was saying that, you know, but he's saying that, look, when is it going to end, though, Randall? I mean, you're saying all this. I mean, you know, I mean, come on. Like, you're putting, you're putting too much on Marcy. She's pregnant and all. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. What did you just say? And that's where it ended. I'm like, Larry, you dumb son of a bitch. That was a part of, of a confidentiality clause. You were not supposed to say that shit. And you just fucking told him. You fucking idiot. Yeah, and I hope Marcy beats your ass. Because, dude, really? So you just got so loose and so candid with Randall that you just practically threw Marcy under the bus. The one thing that she wanted to hide from him, now he knows. So now it's really going to be crazy. And next week's the season finale, and I definitely look forward to it. So um, that's what I have, y'all. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell to get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, I've started to go fund me. You can also check that link in the description box. I also have a Snapchat. You can also check that out as well. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And I'll be back with the next episode of If Loving You Is Wrong. So until then, everybody, take care.